candidates on a Sunday discussing this topic. And then we have our experts to come and tell us how we can become more aware of this condition and what we could do uh, to contribute to screening and managing this better. So uh, there are two words in the topic, right? It says NASH, NAFLD, and most times we use it interchangeably without probably knowing what exactly it means. We will be reviewing what the current guidelines recommend and how we can adapt what the guidelines recommend into our clinical practice. So the word NAFLD is a blanket term, you can say, which uh, covers all the various aspects or subgroups of this conglomerate of diseases. So if you see, it is broken down into non-alcoholic fatty liver, and there is another entity called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And of course, there is the dreaded complication where it can lead to fibrosis in the future, which could end up with cirrhosis, which might be irreversible. There is an increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma, and this has now become the second most important cause of hepatocellular carcinoma worldwide, the top being hepatitis C. So we have a metabolic condition which can increase the risk for a cancer, right? So if you're talking about cancer surveillance and cancer prevention, this is also something that we should think about. Now, it's important to note that the steatosis or the liver fat deposition, the most common cause is probably alcohol. So here, uh, it might be very difficult to find anybody with zero alcohol intake in the current world. So it might be important to understand what might be the cutoff, and our speakers here will tell us below which where you should think that alcohol is maybe not the problem and that we might need to look at metabolic causes. So NASH, or where there is hepatitis, is a condition where there's inflammation which is seen. It's usually a term or a diagnosis which is made after a biopsy is made. So today we will also learn about the indications when we will ask for a biopsy, send over to a specialist to help us, and when you and I can screen, and when you and I can intervene to manage this. But this is a conference on diabetes per se, right? Why are we talking about that? We're talking about a liver condition, right? Is it right, or are we now trying to become gastroenterologists? I'll answer that question in a while. But before that, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is very common. Close to 25% of the world uh, is affected by it. Closely paralleling maybe the rate of obesity worldwide, okay? And it is said that by 2060 or so, it will soon be the leading cause for liver transplantations. In certain sections of uh, US, it is the most common cause of liver transplantation and not hepatitis C or any of the viral causes or even, let us say, uh, drug-related causes. So that's exactly why we have to pay attention. But if you're thinking why diabetologists and physicians and endocrinologists who are taking care of diabetes should worry about this, this is a, a global map trying to show you the burden of NAFLD or NASH in individuals with diabetes. Okay, so if you take a look at uh, South Asia, the prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is at about 57.9%, which means one in two out of the patients that you see in your clinic could potentially have NAFLD, right? NASH, where you have hepatitis or inflammation in the cell, might be present in about one third of your patients. So one in three of your patients could be potentially having injury to the hepatocyte, which causes a release in liver enzymes in the serum. And a good 17% might have fibrosis. And if you're wondering what the connection is, the risk factors for type 2 diabetes and NAFLD have a lot of overlap. The most prominent of them being generalized obesity, specifically abdominal obesity, along with insulin resistance. So in a way, they can actually feed each other up and make it worse for each other. So that's exactly why, if you're thinking of, we are now beginning to talk more and more about comprehensive care, and if you go back and see, all major guidelines do recommend that screening for NAFLD and also thinking about management is important. So overall, you and I do see the word fatty liver when we see an ultrasound report, right? But when should we be worried? We also occasionally do see liver enzymes also high. So today we will learn which 
liver enzyme report should you should you be alerted about when should you speak to a gastroenterologist when should you ask for a fibro scan should you ask for a fibro scan at all is there any screening test you should do if liver enzymes are normal is there anything that we are doing in the management of diabetes which can improve liver disease or worsen liver disease those are going to be the sections that we're going to talk about and we will review what do all the guidelines say how exalted is their recommendation can we apply it in our clinical practice and improve outcomes so that is going to be what we're going to be doing in the next uh, 40 minutes or so so can i request dr bharat to take over the stage